and welcome to Build. I'm Simon Atkins. As always, we are live from London. Now, today we're joined by a man of many talents. When he's not meandering down the King's Road, you can find him writing best-selling books and starring on screens big and small. Would you please welcome the wonderful Ollie Locke, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Oh, you've got the juice, which can probably mean only one thing, Ollie. I'm trying to be healthy. <laughs> or you're hungover. <laughs> bit of both, bit of both. Listen, thank you for joining us on the sofa. We're going to be talking to you in just a second. But first, if you guys at home want to get involved, you absolutely can. All you need to do is tweet us at Bill Series LDN, or you can leave a comment below this video if you're watching live on Facebook. Ollie, how are you? Thank I'm you good. for joining us. I'm well. No, thanks for having me. How are things? Um, yeah, as I said, slightly hungover. Um, I got asked to be best man at my best man's wedding last night, so it's, it's kind of quite an important night of getting drunk, really. Um, but good, apart from that. And are you going to be going to the Brits tonight? I do have tickets, um, but actually I'm not going to go. <laughs> um, well, I know, I know now, the, yeah, now I'm waiting everyone for that. is going to want your tickets. Yeah, immediately. <laughs> um, I put it on my friend's group at the moment saying who wants them, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but um, I'm not going to go, but I am going to go to Jack Whitehall's after party afterwards. Nice, 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 nice. So another hungover day tomorrow. Yes, almost certainly, yeah. So listen, you're here to talk about your brand new book, The Islands of Fandai. I got yes. The, I got the name right. So just tell us a little bit about it and what's the kind of storyline behind it. There, there it is in all its glory. Yeah, um... So I started writing about nine years ago, um, and um, it's about a little girl called Antigone that sails past the horizon into a different realm. Um, and it's her adventures on these islands. It's the first of a trilogy, um, and it's just a very beautiful book um, that takes people into different worlds, really. You started writing it nine years ago. Yeah, nine years ago. That's insane. So where did the idea come from? And I mean, like, you obviously have quite a creative mind. But just tell us about, you know, so do you build these characters in your head from, from when you kind of started off first? The difficult thing was, I think, about writing this is, is that, you, there's, that you can't go into a book and say, oh, I need to research this. It's literally coming from your mind. Um, I created a character a long time ago called the Bump Into Nights. The idea that things go bump in the night is that I find always terrifying when we were children. And I wanted to kind of create them. So basically, they sit on the horizon eating children's wishes. Um, and that's, that's why wishes sometimes don't come true, because the bump into have eaten them. Um, and they're terrifying, horrible creatures run by a man called Sorlax, who's kind of this big evil creature. And yeah, it's, it's all a magical, magical tale. But, but. so, um, do, do you get inspiration from lots of other books? Are you a big reader? I am a reader, but it's, it's no, I, it's kind of over the years, Cornwall was my biggest inspiration, because I love the kind of roughness of Cornwall, and it's kind of based there. Uh, and they sail past from, from the Cornish coast. Um, and yes, I just wanted to create something that was very British as well. How Harry Potter kind of created that kind of British yes. feel. Um, I wanted to do that, but with a kind of Cornish vibe. So you said that the central character is Antigone, but yeah. are there any parallels between the ancient Greek tragedy of Sophocles? Uh, Does no. anybody know who Sophocles is? No. It, Probably not. <laughs> but no, there wasn't. It was, um, the Greek tragedy I think is quite good fun, but Antigone is always one of those names that I think is a wildly underused name. Um, and I think it's amazing. The difficulty thing was with Harry Potter at the beginning, everyone worried about Hermione being mm. Hermione and stuff like that. And uh, I've done exactly the same thing as, as, as Jacob Rowling. Well, I'd love to say that. Uh, 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 Jacob Rowling by putting a name in there that children aren't going to be able to pronounce. Um, and so everyone's going Antigone, and I'm like, it's spelt Antigone, but it's Antigone. Um, now you're talking about Harry Potter, but the Metro Review um, hailed it as the next Harry Potter. That's a pretty big... Um, thing for them to say, that isn't it? and for you, it's a huge accolade. Yeah, that was. A, that, I mean, that huh, opened the newspaper one day to see the next Harry Potter was extraordinary and amazing, amazing thing to see. Um, and then other people picked it up, and then the mail picked it up, and stuff like that. So it was a really nice thing to do. Um, it's still yet to be seen um, um, by America. Hopefully, that will go over there soon. So it'd be nice to see what they think. So if you're to describe it in three words, I know it's probably a hard thing to ask, but if you're to describe the book or the trilogy, as you said, in three words, what would those words be? Uh, fantastical, um, I think beautiful and very mysterious. Mm. Now, it's been particularly um, resonated quite well with autistic readers. Now Why do you think that is? I didn't imagine was going to happen. Um, I'm a dyslexic writer and I've always struggled with dyslexia all, all my life. So the way I write, I think, is very, very visual. Mm. And so when anyone reads the book, immediately uh, you can see the characters, you can see the place, you can see everything, and it takes you into that world, which is my style of writing. Um, and 
what I, I, I suddenly had a few people saying, my autistic son really loves this. And I was like, that's amazing. I was like, this is, and they were like, You've never, we've never been able to capture him with anything. And this is, and it carried on and carried on. And then it became a really big thing that anyone with learning difficulties, the parents were getting in touch with me saying, this is resonating with them and thank you. And I was like, that's, for me, that's, that's an amazing, yeah, amazing thing. Yeah, it makes it worthwhile, thing. doesn't it? That, that's, that's fascinating. So how do you go about writing a book? Because I mean, it's quite a daunting prospect isn't it and you're, you've written one but you've got another three to write but do you do like, yeah. like do you do you have set times of writing do you have a place where you go to write do you script a lot of it in your head and just write down ideas so the way i do it is i think that to break it up every, every so i break up every what would be a, a moment in their life I, i'd say okay that happens there that happens there that happens there, as, a, as a long paragraph and then i build on those and so as long as i've got everything and three quarters of the way through the book i didn't know how i was ending and so that was it. I never, that I never petrifying? saw that. And I was like, I don't know how it's ending. And, and there was a big twist that I knew I wanted to happen. I knew, it, but I didn't know how it was going to get there. And I just carried on writing. And you have to think and think and think outside the box. And then it just worked. But writing fantasy is a lot different from kind of yeah. autobiographical stuff because it hasn't been made yet. Well, speaking of that, we do need to talk about your first book, Laid in Chelsea. Yes, it's so very different. Very different. Yeah. So just, I mean, for those who don't know, tell us what Laid in Chelsea was about. Laid in Chelsea was an autobiographical comedy about um, about my disastrous love life going from <laughs> kind of 15 onwards kind of thing. It's kind of Adrian Mole who grew up and started talking about love and romance and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that I didn't, my agent didn't think it would get to top 40 and it went to number three times bestseller for eight weeks. So that did very well. Um, but yeah, it was like Adrian Mole, but because I was that honest and also Maiden Chelsea was enormous. If you guys remember how big Chelsea was, this is nine years ago, eight years ago, when, uh, nine years ago when it started. So seven <sighs> years ago, it was a huge show. Mm. Everyone watched mm -hmm. it. And, uh, and so it flew off the shelves immediately. And it was, it was the first honest, it was the first autobiography from Chelsea anyway, auto autobiographical kind of comedy. Um, and people, people loved it because it was very honest. It was quite literally talking about blowjobs and stuff. Could you see yourself doing another one of those in the future, maybe? Oh, or are you going to stick more to fiction? I, 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 we'll see what happens. Probably not about sex, but, but, <laughs> but about other stuff. Maybe. Well, also, you don't have a disastrous love life anymore. No. We, You're engaged. Congratulations. Give him a, he's Thank engaged. You. Give him a round of applause. Thank you. Um, so you're engaged to Gareth. Are you looking forward to becoming um, Mr. Locke Locke? Yeah, his surname's Locke as well. How weird is How that? How weird is that? Um, How strange is that? It was very, yeah, very strange. Um, it was, he was, I've been friends with him for 10 years and then it was literally a year ago and we sat there and had a weekend together and we turned around and we were like, why are we not together? And that was it, really. And so... Got engaged nine months later. Nine months later. And so, and any plans for the big day? Do you know when it's going to be, where it's going to be? I think we're getting married in November. Of so, this year. This year? Wow. So, yeah, so it's... it's um, there's lots to sort out. Our wedding planner hasn't got back to us yet, and it's been about three weeks, so we're a bit like, oh, we've mm, forgotten about it. Sack the wedding planner. Yeah, I know. Three weeks. I mean, I'd be getting, I'd be getting nervous now. It's kind of like it's yeah, the end of the year. Yeah, it's not... Yeah, that's a nice one, isn't it? So who proposed to who? And what uh, was that like? He proposed to me. Um, we both knew we wanted to get married and we had actually gone to get rings. Uh, so we went to Theo Fennell and got kind of bespoke, lovely rings made. And then we went to the Peter Pan statue in obviously kind of J.M. Barry, who wrote Peter Pan, is one of my, one of my favourite authors. And, um, and he took me to the statue in Kensington Park Gardens um, and basically just whispered, will you marry me? Okay, it was very sweet. Very sweet. I wasn't sweet. down on one knee. But then I, what I did, the, the awkward part of it is I realised I was still holding my dog's poo bag. <laughs> uh, and I was like, this is not romantic in any way. Oh, point. the glamour is real. Yeah, it's true, it's true. So obviously we know you from the BAFTA award-winning show, um, Made in Chelsea. Do you think you'll ever return and go to Made in Chelsea, go on the next series? I, d I doubt it. Is that time in your life over now? I've, yeah, because also it's very hard to progress into other stuff when you've got when you when you're stuck on one show. Everyone sees you as that one mm. one person from that one show, and that's it. Hard to progress. And so if I'm always there, and I could be there for the next ten years, but I, I'm not I'm not going to learn anything else. And presumably you still see the cast and hang out with the cast. Yeah, I do. Who I are do your best mates? Well, I from still the show? live with Liv Bentley. She was in my kitchen hungover yeah. this morning, so. She's, um, and she's a big part of the show now. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I see her, I see Binky, and I see Richard Dynan from back in the day, and I see, still see other people. Um, it's, it, it's, it is quite a phenomenon, isn't it, uh, Made in Chelsea and all these other reality shows. Why do you think people are so obsessed with, um, you know, the lives of kind of like um, rich people 
and West London? I think, it, you know what? I think I'm going to take that away slightly. I'm going to say with any different subsector of the world, we're fascinated with something that's not our own world. Mm. And so where Geordies do their thing and where Essex did their thing, we're fascinated with what Essex do for starters because we're like, well, I didn't, I didn't have big fake boobs and I didn't have, I mean, all yeah, this kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. I didn't have Botox at 22, but I was fascinated to see what they did. And it was the same. And so they were fascinated with, with what, this bunch of reprobates do. Um, there they are in all their glory. We were all in, there was a lot of us in barefoot, the most painful rocks I've ever been on my entire life. Pretty spiky rocks. Horrible day that was. <laughs> well, it looks lovely, but like, you know, pictures can be deceiving. Um, is there anything, when you look back at your time in Maiden Chelsea, do you like regret anything? Is there stuff that you wish didn't happen or that you hadn't said? Or do you look at it, uh, look back at it and go, you know what, that was a period of time in my life and it's kind of helped me to kind of build the career that I have today. I mean, yeah, I don't think you can regret anything in life, I suppose, because you did it for the right reason at the right time, I suppose. But, but then again, I can also say, yeah, I do regret stuff every now and then. Um, yeah, there were some moments that, that I, I struggled with. Mm. I'd always made myself... I don't know, I, I, I put myself on a little bit much at the beginning. Long hair, Union Jack clothes, stuff like that. I felt that was more of a character. Um, I trained to be an actor, I went to drama school, and I felt like I was putting on a bit of a character. So when it came to me the outside world, it was, it was my choice to, to over-exaggerate myself. Um, and I think I, I ended up going through a bit of a breakdown because of that because I realised that it, that wasn't really me. And then, but is it quite difficult when you like, you know, see and read those things online and on Twitter about you? And how, how, do, you, how do you deal with kind of like, like a negative attention when you're in the spotlight like that? I've, you know what, I'm so, so lucky. I've always been nice on camera. I've always done the best thing. I've always looked after the girls and 90% of my, my following are women. And um, I'm their gay best mate and that's how it should be. And that's how I, and so generally they, they're very nice to me. <laughs> So you've now kind of moved away from reality, as you said, and you've gone into acting. Yes. So we can see you on the first, the next series of Plebs, and you've yeah. also just finished filming Greed. Yes. With some big names. Huge with Stu names. Steve Coogan, Isla Fisher. Who else was there? Stephen Fry. David Stephen Mitchell. Fry. So um, what was that like? So so what um what were you Ace saying? Ace Butterfield. Does anyone see Sex Education? There you are. So Sex Education. The lead in uh, the lead in uh, Sex Education. Asa. He's my plays my brother. Brother-in-law. So what is, what's There's the old Isla, acting yeah. like? And, um, and that's Shanina Sheikh. She's Victoria's Secret Model. That's Sophie Cookson, who's the lead girl in The Kingsman. A casual picture with a Victoria's Secret Model. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're all good mates now. <laughs> We're on, like, love you term at the end of text. I love it. I'm like, XOXO. Oh, XO. Cool. And be like, <laughs> so how was, um, how's the acting going? And what is it like? I mean, it's very different to reality TV, isn't it? It's hugely different. I chose to be an actor, but it was, it, that was my first major part. And... It's really funny because all the press are, are sitting there being like, Ollie's a cameo, because I think they assume I am playing myself in a film about rich people. Um, but <laughs> it, it, it's, it's not, and it's very much, and I'm actually a bit of a dick in it, if I'm honest. I'm not the nicest bloke okay. um, in the film. And so, um, but yeah, that was my first role, and to sit there and be like, and I remember, I can't say too much because it's not out until September, but I remember my, my first scene, they were like, Ollie, you're with Isla and Stephen Fry, and I was like... Oh uh, uh, I was like, oh, play cool now. Like, <laughs> so then what is it like, though, when you're like standing beside Stephen Fry and it's like, action, time to like say your lines. You're not like, oh, my God, I better not like muck this up. Yeah, absolutely. Are you like, like literally tapping yourself? Um, yeah, quite. Sick. But no, it was fine. We all became friends and it was all nice. And But we also we're spending, I spent a month in Mykonos filming this. And so it was like we all became like best mates. Like it was bizarre. So nice. For that month, you're literally like, like one day I had, I had breakfast, lunch, and dinner with Stephen Fry one day, and I was like, this is just extraordinary. <laughs> like, I mean, what do you talk about? I can imagine he's quite an interesting character. The best of the best. And is he as I interested mean, in you as you probably want to ask him lots of questions? Oh, absolutely fascinating. Yeah, he, yeah asks you lots of questions and all that kind of stuff. He's fascinating and charming. So in Everything plebs, you'd ever want from Stephen Fry. Yeah, he does seem like a lovely man, and I'm glad to hear that. Um, in plebs, you play an East London hipster. Can you not tell? That's just me. It's a bit of a departure from his, from the reality of the situation. Yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, I do. I, yeah, I play an East 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 Londoner, um, but kind of partially kind of hipstery kind of. I think he tried. He moved from Chelsea to be a cool person in East London, <laughs> and I don't think he's ever going to have it. Um, hopefully, that's. Uh, we're, we're, hopefully, we're filming that. I haven't got the call up yet for the next series, but hopefully, well, we'll hopefully back in. Now, like your career extends to include author, actor, entrepreneur, TV star, philanthropist. Where do you go next? 
from here? What's what's on the cards for Oli Lock for 2019? Um, there is there's a couple of shows that are quite interesting that okay. that um, I'm excited about. But you know what? I think when Greed comes out, we'll have to see what happens because that shows a different side of me. I think, and hopefully, will people will give me another role after that? Hopefully. Um, but yeah, there's lots of fun things in the pipeline. But again, I've got two other books to write as well, so we'll see. And have you started writing those yet? Yish. Yish. What does that um, mean? Is that like, oh my God, I've got that, that must be quite daunting. It's, it's, it's one the most down, exhausting thing I've ever done is writing this book. Um, and you can't be going on the piss on a Tuesday night and a Wednesday night during the week if you're going to, if you've got two more That's <laughs> true. books to write. That's true. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I, 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 I I mean, we'll see what happens, but yes, I have to. I have to write those soon and not get. Yeah. Well, listen. Good luck with um, the next two books. I just need to ask you before you go: Is there any other reality show that you would ever consider doing? Um, constructive reality, or or as an. Uh, let, let's go with show. both. Let's go with like a big shiny floor entertainment floor, or a shiny floor entertainment show, and then a constructed reality. I mean, I would discuss the jungle at some point because I think it's one thing that that seems fun. And I love it. I did the island a couple of years ago, but it's that I think that's I quite like the idea of bugs on my face. I, I would hate so much; it's unbelievable. But I like the challenge. But I would love to see you on the island, but then again, I equally would love to see you um, chowing down on some kangaroo balls. Would we? Would we like to see that? It would, Probably. It would be interesting. Ali, thank you so much for joining us on Built. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for. No, thank you for But thank me. you very much. Ali's book, The Islands of Fandy, is out now. Fandy, should <laughs> I say, is out now. So grab a copy. You won't be disappointed. Tune in tomorrow for more fun right here on the Build series London Sofa with Love Islands, Chris and Kim, here to talk about their brand new series. Right now, though, give it up one more time for Ali Locke, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs>